the rarest shark with pushing jaws, the quickest fish in the world, an underwater alien, faceless creature from the ocean bottom, and much more. Smart Beats is with you. In this episode, you'll see the strangest, rarest, and record sea creatures. Let's start with an extremely curious image shared with me by a subscriber. There are a number of stories on the internet as well as many eyewitnesses who assure that a previously unknown monster has been caught in Australia in 2020. However, the confirmation of the story is just one shot you can see right now. On the one hand, so many eyewitnesses are bribed, but on the other hand, somehow you don't really want to believe it. What do you think? Write in the comments. Taiwan has always been known for its diverse findings, and the fish caught in 2023 was no exception. The fishermen caught a very rare goblin shark, which among other things was also incredibly large. At first, people planned to sell it to one of the restaurants, but in the end, the individual was bought by representatives of the local museum to enable every guest of the museum to see the monster of the depths in person. The giant fish weighed about 1,800 pounds and was pregnant with six at once. In fact, even if this fish was not so big, it'd still be one of the great interests because fish of this species are not frequent guests on the surface. They got their name because of their very strange appearance, resembling a mythical creature. They have a small head, a long body, short pectoral fins, and a mouth full of sharp teeth. Moreover, their jaws extend outward to grab prey such as bony fish, squid, and crustaceans before retracting back under the shark's eyes. The creature was first caught only in 1897, somewhere off the coast of Japan. Despite this, nothing much is still known about goblin sharks. People only know that they live at a depth of 650 feet and usually do not exceed 13 feet in length. Algerian Gorilla Trinidad is a large island off the coast of Venezuela in the southern Caribbean Sea. It was there that a photo was taken in 2023 that went viral. On it, a man is holding a so-called Algerian gorilla in his hands. The photo has generated a lot of controversy and theories. Some are sure that this is a sign from above. Others take the creature for a mutant and demand to pay more attention to the environment. And the third type of people hold their ground to the end and firmly and say that it's the result of Photoshop. But no matter what anyone says, I also think that this photo is a little strange. The thing is, when a person finds such a unique creature, they will involuntarily want to show it to scientists or at least the public. I mean in person, not through a snapshot. The man literally evaporated after the shot was published. Do you think such a creature in nature is even possible? Write in the comments. Rare Lobster The next catch I would confidently call a fantastic one, in both the literal and figurative senses of the word. After all, the British fishermen took out of the water the rarest lobster of bright blue color, which in addition was distinguished by its rather large size. To make you understand, in haute cuisine restaurants, a dish with such lobster costs about $500. Can you imagine how much the whole crustacean can cost? That's why when a fisherman pulled one of his lobster traps onto the deck of his boat, he couldn't believe his eyes. After surfing the internet, the man learned that the odds of such a catch are about 1 in 2 million. However, the man did not dare to profit from his catch. He took a few pictures of the lobster with unusual coloring and released it back into the Bay of the Irish Sea. By the way, do you know why this lobster has such an amazing color? It's not because of its environment, but because of its genetics. The body of the blue lobster in excessive amounts produces a protein that together with a specific molecule creates a complex of blue color called crustacyanin. This is responsible for the bright blue coloration, which is a defect from a scientific point of view. The following story happened to a fisherman from the States named Charlie Adkins. The resident of America went to the sea to fish. Everything was going smoothly. Nothing meant trouble. But suddenly, when Charlie wanted to look at his catch, he noticed something extremely strange among it. If you look closely, you'll notice in this something a head black dots that look like eyes, and antenna. The man decided to share the pictures on the web because it was for the first time he saw such a strange creature. Tell me it's not an alien, otherwise I'll never be able to swim in the sea, commented Adkins. Many people wanted to support the man, but they couldn't. 
Even the scientists who joined the discussion didn't know who it really was. The only adequate option was that we can see a phronema in front of us, a deep-sea crustacean that leads a parasitic lifestyle. By the way, it's said that it was this creature that inspired Ridley Scott to create a xenomorph in the movie Alien. Imagine the following situation. You catch a fish and you feel it's finally bitten. How long would it take you to get it on deck? Maybe a couple of minutes if it's small? Well, or half an hour if it's some big fish, right? Well, the professional fishermen in this story took eight hours to get the fish out. They caught a simply gigantic swordfish that weighed 350 pounds. According to the fisherman, he had six other partners involved. The men may have caught the largest fish in the history of their state. And as you can understand, the difficulty of catching was not only in the size of the creature, but also in the fact that it was a swordfish, fish with a huge transformed upper jaw with which it pierces its opponents through, breaks mollusk shells, and in general shows who's the boss. Swordfish are among the fastest fish. In moments of danger, the fish develops a speed of up to 60 miles per hour. It also has a unique organ responsible for thermal regulation. It's called the miracle net. This is such a 5.3 ounce ball of veins and arteries, which is located near the eyes and tiny fish brain. This organ is needed to keep the fish from passing out during deep dives to the bottom and not to cool down in cool waters. Were you surprised by the capabilities of the swordfish? Well, apparently you haven't heard of the sailfish, the fastest fish in the world. It lives in tropical, subtropical, and temperate waters of all oceans, and its distinctive feature and appearance I would call, strangely enough, the sail, or rather very similar to its high and long front dorsal fin. The sail starts from the back of the head and goes along almost the entire back of the fish. Close to it is located a short and low second dorsal fin. Thanks to this structure, the 10-foot-long sailfish, weighing about 220 pounds, can accelerate up to 68 miles per hour. But that's not all that the handsome man can surprise us with. For example, when he's excited, he can change his color and become black. This is the responsibility of his nervous system. It's how the sailfish adapts and matches its mood. Cephalopods, chameleons, and other color-changing animals have the same mechanism. Once a sailfish is cornered prey, it changes its tone to a bright color, like a tropical parrot. A sailfish can turn blue or silvery green with white spots, while its sail is purple. At the same time, our flash from the fish world has no swim bladder. The point is that this organ would be a hindrance in such fast movement. All the gas exchange systems at such speeds could not provide him with the pressure necessary for swimming. Their negative buoyancy is compensated for by the peculiarities of the body structure and muscular effort, especially the tail part. Speaking of the peculiarities of the structure, during hunting, the sailfish retracts its dorsal fin into a special hollow on its back. The resulting streamlining of the body allows you to easily accelerate to high speeds. This is also facilitated by turbulence arising from frequent fluctuations of the tail. The fin is needed only when the fish wants to turn sharply somewhere, when it needs breaking. Well, and also the sailfish, as you've already noticed, has an elongated upper jaw as in a swordfish. Basically, it plays exactly the same role, the role of a bayonet, with which the creature pierces its opponents. And although the sailfish does not do this so effectively, he's learned to use the sword for something else. Scientists say that with it, he can also create a zone of turbulence for faster travel. A pink-colored shark, bloating, barking, and spitting water, is how the fisherman who caught this creature described his finding. It happened off the coast of California. After taking a few photos, the man hurried to release the fish back and contact local biologists. He expected that his pictures would be immediately confiscated and that he would be forbidden to tell anyone about it because he met an alien but everything turned out to be much simpler. It was neither an alien nor even a mutant. The man had met a swell shark. Truth be told, it was still unusual in that it was albino, but the point stood. These sharks live at depths of up to 1,500 feet, are active at night, and have a rather original way of defense. As you can imagine, it involves bloating. When sharks sense danger, they hide in crevices and quickly increase in size by swallowing water. Thus, the enemy cannot pull them out and soon enough lays its armor down, leaving the shark alone. 
For the first time, such an unusual creature was described in 1880. Even then, people realized that these sharks are not dangerous to us, at least because of the fact that in length they rarely exceed three feet and purely physically cannot do anything to us, unless, of course, you put your finger in their mouth. They feed on various cephalopods, crustaceans, and small fish, all those on which their small but sharp teeth are enough. When fishermen pull all sorts of unusual creatures from the bottom, they know who they've hooked by the appearance of the fish. They pay attention to its eyes, its nose, its teeth, and so on. But what to do if the fish has no face? That's right, call it faceless and don't fret over it. That's exactly what scientists did when they caught this fish for the first time in 150 years. It was caught by an international team of biologists working off the coast of Australia. When they pulled it out of the water, they noticed that the fish had no eyes, nostrils, and gills were almost invisible, and the mouth located in the lower part of the body. Scientists made the rare find in Jervis Bay at a depth of two and a half miles. The last time this unusual fish caught the eye of researchers was in 1873 at the Coral Sea near Papua New Guinea. Specialists cannot yet say what kind of fish is caught, as it's practically not studied. Nevertheless, theories about it still appear. Some scientists are convinced that the fish has eyes anyway, they're just hidden under the scales. Others are sure that the animal has no eyes because it lives in the depths of the sea where it's very dark and navigates with the help of echolocators. At the same time, you don't have to be completely faceless to amaze scientists and ordinary people. It's enough to live at great depths under killer pressure, which transforms your body so that even Mother Nature doesn't recognize you. A prime example of this is the black dragonfish caught by ordinary people. There's no special information about where exactly it was caught and what was done with it. There's only this picture on a fisherman's forum. But something tells me that it's unlikely that people kept the monster as a souvenir and took it home. I think they either released it back or handed it over to scientists. Either way, the black dragonfish is an extremely understudied species, so an extra one never hurts. And it's not its nightmarish appearance, it's its habitat. Our guest prefers to settle at the wildest depths of about half a mile to a mile. These creatures are spread throughout the world's oceans because at that step, the conditions are the same everywhere. All its life, this spooky fish spends in pitch darkness and develops in it up to 10 inches in length. The body of the fish is black and does not contain scales. The skull is small, but the mouth is unimaginably large. It's said that in some cases, it can be as much as a quarter of the entire length of the body. At the same time, the connecting membrane between the jaws is absent, and because of this, the mouth of the fish is literally bottomless. It seems that there's nothing scarier we can think of, but the black dragonfish can still surprise. To do this, it will take and tear his head from the body. Due to the fact that the front vertebrae of the fish do not ossify, the blackfish is able to move its head in the vertical plane, perhaps so conceived for better orientation, in which together with the so-called lanterns help locate it above the eyes. By the way, it has two pairs of them. Giant Crab What do Australians do for fun? Considering how unusual creatures live there, they're hardly satisfied with going to the zoo. As the author of the following video shows, he personally came up with a more exciting way to have fun, and he'll need almost nothing for it. It's important to have a stick and not to have common sense. If all the conditions are met, then you can safely climb into the pit with a giant crab and bait him with a wooden stick. As soon as the crab bites, you'll need to have time to grab it directly with your bare hands, otherwise then grabbed will be nothing. But seriously, the video of course is great, but only to repeat what I saw, I do not advise and for no reason. As the author of the video said, being a professional and doing it not for the first time, he still almost lost a finger. It was pure luck. Although, I don't even know. Maybe the man is being modest, because in addition, he also catches eels, poisonous snakes, and toothy fish, swims with crocodiles, and makes friends with sharks. We can only hope that luck will never leave this extreme man, because who else will show us a video of him pulling a giant mangrove cave out of a hole with his bare hands? Now I'm going to tell you about strange creatures washed ashore. Mysterious Monster What's usually washed ashore? Perhaps some classic underwater inhabitants known to people which got some kind of injury or died. 
Sometimes, of course, there's a case where, because of some wave, quite a healthy and uninjured creature ends up alone on the shore and cannot return back to its native environment. Such a case was captured on camera here. But as you've already realized, there's no question of any adequacy of the creature. Scientists saw it for the first time in their lives, and these people give all their free time to study the ocean. Judging by its appearance, this fish is not among the kind and responsive. It reminds me more of a shark, but either mutated or just an unusual one for some terrible depths. What would you do if such a mysterious creature appeared in front of you? Write in the comments. Orc Have you watched Lord of the Rings? Do you remember the orcs from that amazing movie? Although it was filmed quite a long time ago, at a time when technology was far from ideal, the characters there were really beautiful and unusual. Even the ones who were antagonists. I mean, this beached creature reminds me incredibly much of the orcs from The Lord of the Rings. Its face is just as wrinkled and evil, its neck has lines of skin, and its face color is imperceptible in the dark. People discovered this horrible thing on the shores of Egypt and immediately called scientists for help. Unfortunately for the public, scientists could not provide any clarity. They just threw their hands up and said that additional tests should be carried out. But what is there to study? It's clear that this is not a simple creature. It has an unusual face and a horrible body shape, which is either an illustration of the initial appearance of the creature or simply some kind of deformation. Or maybe it's just a fake and a hoax. Maybe we were just deceived and shown a sloppy figure as a creature found on the shore. Share your thoughts below the video. Are you sure it's a stone? When we hear something about rocks, we don't even think that they could be alive. It sounds like complete nonsense. However, it's time to expand your horizons and discover a stone that breathes. Its name is Pyura chilensis, and by nature, it's a marine animal that looks no different from a rock. But if you crack it open, you can see all the signs of classic life. This ancient creature that was washed ashore has two sex organs at once and is a distant relative of vertebrates, although it's a chordate in itself. Surprisingly, these creatures are even bred on special plantations. I can't imagine what purpose they serve in this case. Yes, I thought that they could become the basis of molecular gastronomy or po cuisine, but it turned out to be much simpler. Basically, these stones are burned and the resulting ash is used instead of copper ore. The good news is that despite the constant capture by humans, these unique creatures reproduce incredibly quickly and have a stable population. Another benefit for people to catch this delicacy is the fact that it's completely safe. The maximum that can happen if it's stepped on is that it will hit the offender with a strong jet of water. Beautiful, but very dangerous. The following story makes us realize once again that we should not follow our instincts and judge a creature solely by its appearance. A woman was walking along a beach in South Africa and saw an unfamiliar blue-colored creature in front of her, which looked like a small dragon. As it turned out, her intuition correctly told her to stay away from it. The mysterious monster turned out to be a gastropod from the nudibranch order named the Blue Sea Dragon. The sea dweller feeds on venomous animals, accumulating their venom in its body, which it later uses in practice. The fact that more and more of these creatures are appearing every year cannot help but be scary. They infest the United States, Australia, appear in Taiwan, and also keep a part of South Africa at bay. Tentacle Monster Although I don't even know what's better, to encounter a mysterious blue sea dragon, which is known to science, although it's dangerous, or to encounter a completely incomprehensible creature, which can be both incredibly dangerous and incredibly harmless. Share your thoughts in the comments. And I'll show you this tentacle monster that was washed ashore. It was filmed in Vietnam by an ordinary tour guide who was walking along the beach. In the video that the man took, this Venus brown monster chaotically moves numerous tentacles curved in all directions. Could it be a real-life symbiote from the Venom movie? Or the remains of a mutated jellyfish which cannot pass away? Which is more likely? Unusual Guests California is a place where strange things happen all the time. There's hail of incredible size, there's UFO sightings, and there can also be an invasion of super weird guests that belong to the Echioridia worms. 
Their body is soft and sausage-like, with lengths usually varying greatly between 1 to 10 inches. The body is equipped with a long, non-retractable proboscis, which is covered with cilia that drive food particles towards the mouth. Etcheridae worms are capable of discarding the proboscis or part of it, which grows back after a couple of weeks. Usually, such non-standard guys hide underground, and it's almost impossible to find them. But here they were on land, and nothing and no one covered them. Of course, they were quickly attacked by seagulls, and as the locals say, they were so full of them that some of the birds could hardly move on land. I wonder what could have caused such a massive invasion of worms. And now I'm going to show you a sea slug, but not just any sea slug, but a rainbow sea slug. This colored organism is quite beautiful and cute, but no one was happy about its appearance in Britain at all. People, as usual, look at everything from the science point of view and say that the appearance of this rainbow sea slug in Britain indicates the warming of the ocean caused by the climate emergency. A Pulsating Creature In order to look at the next creation of nature, we'll have to go to New Zealand, because it was there that eyewitnesses noticed a giant cookie on the beach which pulsated in an eerie way. I'm sure that if one said about this picture that allegedly it was taken at a high altitude, some would consider it a full-fledged volcano. I mean, the creation looked as unusual and multifaceted as it was possible at all. When one of the eyewitnesses noticed the movement, he immediately told the others. They didn't believe him at first, but as soon as people touched the organism with a stick, everything fell into place. As the researchers then suggested, it's very likely that people encountered an unusual jellyfish, a lion's mane jellyfish. This is a venomous representative of Cynodaria, which at the same time is not dangerous to humans. However, no one could say why the jellyfish looked like a cookie. Could it have been an alien after all? Or at least a species still unknown to science? What do you think? A US resident was walking along the beach and did the right thing to look under his feet. After all, he noticed the remains of a strange creature nailed to the shores by the waves. The main question that instantly appeared in his mind is, what is it? And why does it look so much like an angel? According to the eyewitness, he stood stunned for a long time and couldn't move. The man didn't understand what was the best thing to do in this situation. He didn't understand whether it was a fish that needed help, or someone terrible or mystical. Or maybe it wasn't a living creature at all, but someone's prank. He could only hope for his friends, whom he immediately called to the place of the find, but they also didn't say anything at all. In an unusual find, some recognized the mythical chupacabra, others recognized the result of environmental pollution by toxic substances, and still others compared it to a dementor. It turned out, judging by the results of the study, everything was much simpler. It was an angel shark. This genus of predatory fish got its name because of the greatly enlarged fins. Therefore, in fact, the guy was not mistaken, but guessed what exactly was in front of him. Horror in real life Sometimes the seas and oceans spit out small creatures on land. Even if they're dangerous or unusual, it's not nearly as interesting as when a giant one comes as washed ashore. Something like this 23-foot-long monster that was thrown up by the Atlantic Ocean. A skeleton and scales remain of this something, and zoologists have only two versions. Either it's a shark from the movie Jaws, or a mutated blobfish, a deep-sea bottom dweller that for some reason is greatly increased in size. Why has no one ever been able to determine what it was? Well, because the body of the found creature was in such a deplorable condition that the experts who came to the site were unable to identify anything at all. The scientists were so confused that at first they mistook it for a baby whale, but then quickly disproved this theory. Some creatures are washed ashore by the ocean itself, but others have to be pulled out by fishermen. However, this doesn't make them any less strange and creepy. Mysterious Cuttlefish at the Bottom of the Well Today's episode opens with a story full of mystery, but don't be too quick to judge it skeptically. So, this incident, which occurred in a small settlement, became known in 2015. According to witnesses, the incident occurred at the neighbors who decided to clean the well. On the appointed day, workers arrived at the site, pumped out the water, and then began to clean the well with buckets. After a while, the bottom appeared, 
But when the workers began to pull the last bucket up, they saw something moved in it. When it was dumped on the ground and poured with water, the workers saw an incomprehensible creature that looked like a cuttlefish. But the surprising thing is that the main habitat of the sea creature is the Atlantic Ocean, except for the American coast and the Mediterranean Sea. In the end, people were undecided on the species of the animal but noted the terrifying appearance and tentacles. Be that as it may, science cannot yet confirm this story as there is insufficient evidence. According to researchers, the appearance of the cuttlefish can be explained by erratic currents or due to natural disasters. But what's surprising is that the observed sea creature didn't correspond to some external figures of the cuttlefish. In general, cuttlefish are sea creatures, which together with octopuses and squids belong to cephalopods. Their appearance is unusual, and their ability to skillfully disguise themselves by changing their color is simply amazing. Cuttlefish live in the warm coastal waters of the Mediterranean, Baltic, and North Seas. Interestingly, they can reach speeds of up to 18.6 miles per hour all thanks to a special funnel-shaped water ejection system. It's worth noting that cuttlefish do have tentacles with which they hunt. A lot of time they lie on the bottom and grab passing fish with their long tentacles. However, they can also rush off to the prey if the prey is large. Despite large fisheries, the cuttlefish population is not threatened as they are quite common animals. What do you think? Do you think the cuttlefish story is a common legend or a future world scientific sensation? Share your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned to see the planet's creepiest deep sea creatures you'd better never encounter. Goblin Shark In fact, this creature has many different names the Goblin Shark, Scapinorhynchus, or Mitsukurina. It's a deep sea shark, the only surviving member in the Mitsukurinidae family of sharks. The Goblin Shark got its name for the bizarre appearance. The snout of this shark ends with a long beak like growth, and the long jaws can be extended far. Coloration is also unusual. Its color is close to pink as blood vessels shine through the translucent skin. The largest individual known to science reached a length of 12.4 feet and weighed 463 pounds. Until relatively recently, scientists thought this species was long extinct, but about a century ago the fish was caught and researchers became aware of the existence of this shark. The goblin shark has special receptors on its body, which the fish uses to track its prey. However, scientists still don't know what exactly these predators eat, because the moment the shark was lifted from the depths of the sea to land, it immediately turned its stomach inside out, getting rid of all of its contents. Black Swallower Many predatory fish, most of which are deep-sea dwellers, can boast of extraordinary voracity. It's not because of their greed and vicious appetite, but because of the limited food resources in the depths of the ocean. Therefore, if they encounter any prey on the way, it will certainly be eaten, even despite its size. One such voracious fish is the black swallower, or chiasmodon. The genus has only seven species, but the most famous and widespread of them is the black swallower. It lives in tropical and subtropical waters of all oceans at a depth of 492 to 13,000 feet. Rarely, the length of this fish exceeds 6 to 8 inches. But thanks to its wide open mouth, the black swallower is able to swallow prey that's much larger than its size. Scientists assume that the black swallower grabs its prey from behind and swallows it starting from the tail. In order to find prey in pitch darkness, black swallowers have a well-developed system of lateral line organs like many other deep-sea fish. It picks up low-frequency vibrations of water, allowing the fish to determine the location of potential prey. Earlier black swallowers were thought to be rather rare inhabitants of the sea depths, but studies carried out in the second half of the 20th century proved the opposite. Scientists found that these fish are an important link in the food chain of tuna and marlins. Two-Headed Sea Devil It's the kind you only see in horror movies and nightmares. This creature was caught in the North Sea off the coast of Netherlands. The two-headed monster was brought aboard a fishing trawler. Fishermen photographed it and posted it on the internet. The photo instantly circulated on the web and attracted the attention of Erwin Kopman, head of the mammal department of the Natural History Museum Rotterdam. As an expert in the field, Kopman understood that the fish was not representative of any new or unknown species, but was the rarest example of Siamese fusion in the porpoise. In the history of marine mammal research, only a handful of such twin pairs have been caught. After photographing the animal as a souvenir, the fishermen released it back into the sea, since in the EU it's illegal to catch such creatures. 
Sea Lions A male sea lion is up to 10 feet long and can weigh hundreds of kilograms. Not surprisingly, the crew members of a Russian fishing trawler were frightened when a sea lion slipped out of the net and stared at them with a chilling calm. As a rule, animals caught in a net fight back fiercely and some even die in shock. This sea lion, however, felt perfectly calm. In the end, the fishermen pushed the sea lion into the water with powerful jets of water. Fish Wife One day, Eric Bartos and his friends went fishing off the coast of Florida. When they fished out a huge sailfish, they couldn't believe their eyes. I like that. It had a wedding ring on its long nose. But Bartos was even more surprised when he saw that it was the same ring he himself had once worn on his ring finger. Three years before the event, Bartos had divorced his wife for some reason known only to him. In order to somehow smooth over the emotional turmoil, he decided to get rid of the ring by putting it on the prow of a sailboat he'd fished out. But the power of the ring could not be undone. He then released the fish back into the sea. And now, three years later, fate has brought him back together with that fish. I guess he and that sailfish were made for each other. And so the term fish wife was born. Oceans, rivers, and lakes are full of creepy and simply unusual creatures. And the ones you saw were just the beginning. Stay tuned to learn about dinosaur-era fish that survived to this day, creepy sharks and ghost fish and chimeras that were caught. Fish from the Age of Dinosaurs Recent research has shed light on the causes of the dinosaur extinction 65 million years ago. An asteroid about 9.3 miles in diameter, moving at a speed of over 39,767 miles per hour, crashed into the ocean near the coast of Mexico. The blast wave was a billion times more powerful than the one generated by the Hiroshima nuclear bombing. A bright flash illuminated the sky above the planet. A huge mass of dust and smoke blocked the sun's rays, causing temperatures to plunge to sub-zero levels. Surviving such a catastrophe was a great stroke of luck. Latimeria is a genus of primitive fish. Until recently, they were thought to have died along with the dinosaurs, but after 65 million years, it turns out that this genus survived. One of these fish was caught in the net of African fishermen. This is great news for scientists and not so good news for fishermen. Latimeria are inedible. Long Shark Fishing brings in a lot of money, and the bigger your net, the bigger your catch will be. Sometimes they say, be careful what you wish for. That's what happened to one fisherman who, like all fishing enthusiasts, dreamed of a big catch. One day, his crew pulled aboard the trawler a huge shark that had all the signs of a super predator. Its teeth were stained pink, indicating that the shark had ruined many lives. However, no evidence was found that the shark could kill humans. Alien In Singapore, a fisherman discovered something that strongly resembled the creature from the famous movie Alien. The creature was in his boat. It had many tentacles that moved in all directions. The fisherman thought it was a brittle star, a close relative of sea stars. Its many tentacles resembled a revived noodle. Shark Detective In 1935, fishermen from Australia, Albert and Charles Hobson, found a tiger shark entangled in a net. They pulled the shark ashore and sent it to the nearest oceanarium. And that was just the beginning of the story. A week later, while at the aquarium, the shark regurgitated a human arm right into the water. It's hard to imagine the horror felt by the visitors who saw it. It's noteworthy that there was a rope tied to the arm, and in addition, it had a tattoo on it. Employees of the Oceanarium called the police, and they immediately identified the limb. It belonged to their informant, a petty criminal named Jim Smith, who'd gone missing shortly before the event. A case was filed. I wonder if the shark detective was subpoenaed to testify. Giant Shrimp Imagine that you're swimming in the sea and a huge shrimp, which is almost 20 inches long, swims up to you. Such a shrimp was caught by Steve Bargerin off the coast of Florida. Many experts believe this species belongs to the Japanese mantis shrimp. They have incredible strength. With a blow of a claw, the shrimp can damage the shell of another crustacean and even break the glass in the aquarium. This is because during the impact, the claw moves at a speed of 50 miles per hour, which makes a very dangerous weapon. Ghostfish The prehistoric, long-nosed chimera is often called a ghostfish. It has wings and its eyes glow bright green. 
Encounters with it are very rare, but Canadian fisherman Scott Tanner was lucky enough to catch the chimera and capture it on camera. Under the sizzling gaze of the fish, Hannibal Lecter himself would not have been able to resist. Unexplored Secrets of the Depths of the Sea Roman Fedortsov, a fisherman from Russia, became famous overnight after he started posting photos of the most mysterious creatures people have ever pulled out of the depths of the sea. His collection confirms that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about life at the bottom of the world ocean. For example, few people think about the dragonfish. It has very sharp teeth, a black body covered with slime, and a completely blank and dead stare. Roman's discoveries could be taken as the basis for a horror movie script. In his gallery, there's a species about which almost nothing is known. This fish has a transparent body and it has sharp, needle-like teeth. It seems to be just waiting for you to bring your hand close enough to bite it. Big Tigerfish This fish can be found in Africa. Its appearance tells us that it's not to be trifled with, and it's better not to get in its way. It's known to attack crocodiles and humans, so it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. Big tigerfish are found mainly in the Congo River Basin and Lake Tanganyika. When it closes its jaws, its sharp teeth fit into the sinuses like daggers in a scabbard. This is a large predatory fish. Its body length reaches about 5 feet and weighs about 110 pounds. It's the kind of fish you wouldn't want to run into. Common Snapping Turtle This is clearly not what you and I go fishing for. These turtles have beak-like mouths and powerful jaws. Their ability to move their heads quickly makes these turtles even more dangerous. But one young man did pull a common snapping turtle out of the water while fishing. At first, he didn't even realize what kind of creature was on the hook. Oh, I see that mother! What on earth is it? It's a monster! When the turtle turned to face him, he realized he was facing a common snapping turtle and quickly cut the line. Inanimate Objects at the Bottom of the Sea In the ocean, you can come across not only frightening sea creatures but also entire buildings, objects, and unique places that can scare and stupefy. For example, in 1985, off the coast of Long Branch, New Jersey, at a depth of nearly 100 feet, divers found the remains of two freight trains. How'd they get there? Today, both scientists and ordinary people are trying to solve the mystery of the unknown train wreck. There's an opinion that these are not mainline steam locomotives, but some special locomotives used at the stations to ferry trains from one track to another. Neptune Memorial Reef This is a unique monument to those who wanted to be buried in the depths of the sea. A real underwater city is located about three miles from Key Biscayne Beach in Miami. There's an underwater necropolis, stone roads, high gates, remains of buildings, and monuments to the dead. Located at a depth of 39 feet, the city was designed in 2007 and was built with sponsorship from large funeral service operators. Notably, some of the objects are made from the ashes of cremated bodies. Now I'm going to tell you why piranhas are more dangerous than you thought. Piranha Features there are many different creatures on the shores of the Amazon River, with which it's extremely undesirable to come into contact. Why? Well, because most of them are insanely venomous or just toothy, predatory creatures which want to devour anyone at any good moment. Mostly dangerous creatures are loners. I would even say that almost everyone leads exactly such solitary way of life, but still piranhas remain the main or one of the main ones in the Amazon. Those fish that are not remarkable for their size seem completely harmless and incapable of anything. But as soon as they gather in their favorite native shoal or also put their teeth out, it immediately becomes clear they'll devour anyone. These underwater inhabitants gained notoriety as soon as science became aware of them. For a reason, scientists of different times gave these fish their own name, each of which did not mean anything good and kind. One of my favorites is the river man-eater. According to the Aborigines, this fish could well hunt people, its abilities allowed it to do so. Very sharp teeth, very cruel temper, life in society, and well-coordinated movements of the whole group. There's simply no escape from this. People were so scared of these fish that they started making horror films with piranhas in the lead role. Yes, they turned out to be slightly weird and were not appreciated by society, but the fact remains.
Piranhas come in many forms. They all differ in size and other things. But still, if you take the average number, the length of these fish varies from 6 to 12 inches. They weigh about 7 to 9 pounds. But still, as I said earlier, the size is not important here. All the most interesting and most dangerous is stored in their mouths. The teeth of piranhas have a triangular shape, and they're sharp like a razor. The height of each of the teeth is between 2 and 5 millimeters. When the mouth is closed, it looks like a zipper. A curious feature of piranhas is that they sometimes need to shed their old teeth. Doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But that's only at first glance. Piranhas are probably the only creatures on the planet that can use new teeth as soon as they lose their old ones. According to scientists, they can do this several times in a lifetime. New piranha teeth are grown in advance and simply not used until they're needed. Thus, the predator's teeth always remain sharp and strong. A huge number of scientists from different countries have tried to unravel their structure to learn something else, but no one has managed to do it properly. Interestingly, one German scientist attributed piranhas to the sawfish. It's another story where this is true or not, but he did it for a reason. When predators hunt, they seem to put on the flesh of the prey, not letting it slip out. Their jaws are very powerful and their muscles are well developed. A special structure allows creating high pressure when pressing even one of the parts. At first they close and then cut off one or another part of the prey like a guillotine. The process is then repeated over and over until the target is completely exhausted. Piranhas are so tough that adults can even bite bones in half. Well, having heard so many terrible things about these creatures, I don't want to encounter them in real life at all. If I were near the Amazon River, I would be super attentive and would never let them near me. What else would I do? In fact, avoiding their attack is not so easy. Firstly, they are very fast, and it is almost impossible to react to the fact that a whole shoal is literally flying at you. It is especially impossible to do it to a person. Well, secondly, it is incredibly difficult to recognize a piranha in the murky Amazon water. They have many variations of color, each of which merges well with the terrain in its own way. Because of this, even eagle eyesight will not always help to detect these toothy predators. At the same time, piranhas themselves successfully rely on their eyesight, which is used to distinguish enemies in muddy water. Along with it, they have a well-developed sense of smell, which makes their hunting much easier and more intuitive. But even if it so happens that the water is not so murky and you can see the fish around you, I agree that you have to know your enemy by win. In this case, I am talking about piranhas. As I said, they come in many forms, but here is what the most popular members of the family look like. The red-bellied piranha. The length of the body is 6 inches, but there are individuals that grow up to 20 inches in length. The red-bellied piranha has a reputation as a freshwater predator, dangerous to animals and people. It only attacks us when it feels threatened, at least that is what scientists think. It is most common in South American countries. It can be found in almost all local rivers. The red-eye piranha. On average, it reaches 16 inches in length. It lives in the rivers of South America, in the basins of the Amazon and Orinoco rivers, rivers in the north and east of the Guiana Shield, and coastal rivers in northeastern Brazil. It has a diamond-shaped body. Fry are easily distinguished by their more elongated body, dark spots on the scales, and the orange or yellow color of the abdomen. The Black Paku and this is a fish from the piranha family which can be considered the largest because it reaches 43 inches in length and weighs up to 88 pounds. But it also has its own peculiarities. For example, the black paku has square teeth which makes it insanely similar to us humans. Instead of piercing the prey with its fangs and tearing it apart, the black paku bites through its prey's body, tearing pieces off. This technique and its strength are quite enough for life as well as, for example, for splitting strong nuts. By the way, the black paku is a loner. As a rule, it does not swim near its congeners since it feeds on vegetation, fruit, or other similar food. Lifestyle As I said before, piranhas are gregarious fish by nature that are also always on full alert and on hunting mode. They live around a lot of voracious fish, but that doesn't stop them from feeling like the kings of the rivers. And what do kings and queens usually get? That's right, offerings. For example, the following practice is common among local farmers. 
when they have to drive their herd of animals across the river, they choose a few of the weakest or oldest and let them go ahead. Of course, piranhas pounce on them, but this wouldn't be avoided. Distracting the predators with tasty prey, the farmer quickly moves the rest of the animals across the river. At the same time, it's interesting that piranhas can be both common predators and cute, harmless herbivores. The latter actually eat green grass and fruit that have fallen into the water, feeling great. And their predatory relatives are a little less lucky. After all, their nature makes them attack anything that moves. It doesn't matter if the target is dangerous or large, even if it's a snake swimming right towards them, they just don't care. Speed and surprise are the two main factors that allow these monsters to always achieve their goals. Hunting tactics can be quite different, but the main still considered the following. A group of piranhas gather together and hide in an ambush. They wait until some fish or other creature will swim near, and as soon as it's in range, the piranha rush at it with the whole group cling to the soft tissues and will not let it go anywhere. What's surprising, piranhas not only crush the enemy massively, but also do it very cleverly and resourcefully, bite off pieces one by one from different sides, doing everything so that the enemy has not even the slightest chance of survival. The only chance of escape in this case is to swim away after the first attack. In this case, it can get lost in the seaweed and the piranhas will not find the prey. But if they've already bitten off at least a small piece and the prey leaves the slightest trace of blood, the game is over. Their sense of smell will not allow the opponent to hide. Scientists have determined that piranhas need no more than 30 seconds to smell blood in a pretty large body of water. Piranhas are so agile that even large animals cannot escape from them, let alone small fish. Travelers on the Amazon often saw clusters of these fish near their boats, which persistently accompanied them for a long time, hoping to eat something. Sometimes they even fought among themselves. A flight of insects or a fallen blade of grass caused the piranhas to violently rush at a moving object and start a fight. Piranhas live in such a constant chaos, but there's still a moment in it when they can pause and cool off their passion. I'm talking about mating. Spawning occurs in the summer season from March to August. Previously, in order to split into pairs, the fish actively swim around the individual of the opposite sex they like, showing attention and waiting for a response. They make guttural sounds, attract with their colors. Their color becomes brighter and more noticeable. Speaking of sounds, not long ago, scientists found out that, depending on the situation, piranhas can make them in different ways. For example, when they sort things out with each other, they emit signals using contractions of the swim bladder. When piranhas go on the offensive or chase prey, they make sounds by clicking their jaws, fully confirming the reputation of dangerous predators. So, having decided on a pair, these two swim off to a secluded place where there are no endless battles. The female places its eggs on relatively flat surfaces, tree roots, floating plants, bottom ground, the process of spawning occurs at dawn with the sun rising. One individual can give up to several thousand eggs, which are immediately fertilized. Piranhas have sharp teeth, but there are fish with much more dangerous jaws. And now I'll tell you about the most dangerous fish, which has 555 teeth in its mouth. Meet the lingcod. These fish, which live in the North Pacific Ocean, are not only ugly to look at, but they boast a gigantic number of teeth. They have 555 of them. And some of their teeth are located not only in the mouth, but also in the throat. Lingcods are excellent predators, and this is obvious if you just look at them. First, these monsters are quite large and can reach 5 feet in length, weighing about 132 pounds. Secondly, the color of these fish depends on the shade at the bottom so they're perfectly camouflaged, not exposing themselves until the last moment. When the prey is near, usually it's other fish, crabs, squids, and octopuses, the lingcod attacks and destroys it. Half a thousand teeth cope with such a case in no time. Even sharks would envy these toothy creatures. By the way, why do they have so many teeth? Wouldn't a few dozen or at least a hundred be enough? As the scientists found out, the thing is that lingcods lose 20 teeth every day. At that rate, they should quickly become toothless, but new teeth grow as quickly as lingcods lose old ones. Due to their features, as well as tasty meat, lingcods are of great interest among fishermen, but they try not to catch paribas and avoid places where they live if possible. 
These are the most dangerous South American pimlidid catfishes. Like many of these monsters, the pariba can be found in the Amazon River. It's one of the largest native fish. Adults can reach 8 feet in length and weigh over 330 pounds. Unlike the lingcod, the pariba cannot boast of half a thousand teeth, but it's better not to put a finger in its mouth. Ow! It's gonna... And in general, it's better to stay away from this monster because paribas are incredibly voracious creatures. In the wild, they eat everything they can catch and swallow. They're not squeamish about carrion or its remains. The sharp teeth of this aggressive predator are curved backward and are located along the edge of its deep mouth, preventing prey from getting free from its jaws. Local natives say that the pariba can even eat a human, so it's better not to swim in the Amazon River. Goonch Another river, the Kali, is no less dangerous. It doesn't flow in South America, but in Nepal in India. Many dangerous crocodiles can be found on the banks of the river. Tigers can be found hiding in the bushes nearby, and goonch swim in the waters of the river itself. This is a species of Bagarius, the catfish that has gained notoriety. Reaching 6.5 feet in length and weighing about 330 pounds, the goonch is a serious adversary for any creature gotten in the river, including humans. Because of the ritual burning of bodies in the Cali River as a funeral rite in these parts, the goonch is addicted to human flesh. Locals say that these catfish have repeatedly attacked living people, dragging them to the river bottom. One 17-year-old boy was grabbed by this catfish right in front of his girlfriend, and subsequently, he was never found. All that remains to be done is to catch these monsters and hope that the population of the species will wane. Musky Unlike the goonch, there have been no recorded deaths from an encounter with the muskie to date, but all indications are that this fish is capable of killing a person. The muskie, or muskalung, is a huge pike up to 6 feet long, weighing about 66 pounds. These monsters hold the entire population of North America at bay, especially those whose activities involve rivers and lakes. This freshwater version of the barracuda boasts sharp teeth and an aggressive temperament. This combination allows muskies to easily deal with perches, rodents, and waterfowl. This pike attacks humans as well. History knows several cases when this predator attacks swimmers and fishermen, inflicting very unpleasant wounds. The muskalung likes to sit in ambush near shores overgrown with vegetation. To grab the prey, the pike makes a sharp jerk forward, so the prey sometimes doesn't even have time to understand what happened. This toothy monster acts really swiftly. Piara. Piranhas are considered one of the most dangerous and bloodthirsty creatures in South America. Maybe they're not so dangerous for humans, but any inhabitant of the Amazon River is a potential prey for a toothy piranha. But piaras, on the contrary, hold piranhas at bay because they can destroy schools of them. These fish, also known as Hydrolycus scomboroidus, are bloodthirsty and fearless. Exceeding 3 feet in length and reaching a mass of 44 pounds, piaras are characterized by very sharp and creepy fangs. In large individuals, the fangs on the forward-looking lower jaw reach 4 to 6 inches in length, giving them a frightening appearance for which this animal was nicknamed the vampire fish. However, the vampire fish doesn't drink the blood of its prey. It simply doesn't have time to do so, as it attacks the prey from above, pierces it with its fangs, and swallows it whole. The piara is capable of devouring prey that's half its own size. All in all, this is a real river nightmare. Large Tooth Sawfish Most people know this creature by another name, the common sawfish. The large tooth sawfish is difficult to confuse with other river and sea monsters. Yes, unlike the previous animals of the episode, the sawfish feels perfectly well in seawater, swimming in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean and Indo-Pacific. But often these monsters enter the freshwater of rivers. The main feature of the large tooth sawfish is, of course, a sharp rostrum dotted on both sides with tooth like outgrowths. Externally, this part of the body resembles a saw, so it's not surprising that the sawfish got such a name. Using its saw dotted with electroreceptors, the large tooth sawfish can detect prey in muddy water and easily dispose of it. Crustaceans, mollusks, and small fish are unlucky to be in the diet of this monster. In addition, the sawfish defends itself against dangerous predators and large animals with its sharp saw. It can even repel an attack by a shark or a crocodile. 
Still, predators often get the upper hand and gradually kill large-toothed sawfish. They are helped in this by people who actively catch large-toothed sawfish. As a result, everything has come to the point that now this species of creepy fish is on the verge of extinction. Goliath The Congo River, flowing in Central Africa, is the second largest river in the world by discharge volume, following only the Amazon and the deepest river on the planet. Many dangerous creatures can be found in its waters, but few can compete with the Goliath tigerfish. Its scientific name can be translated as giant water dog, and there's some truth in that. This fish is indeed huge, and its character resembles that of an angry hunting dog. According to some reports, the Goliath tigerfish can grow to four or even six and a half feet in length, weighing 110 pounds. The jaws of the Goliath are studded with teeth, each of which looks like a very sharp fang. This is the main weapon of the water dog, with which it can destroy literally any creature in its path. There have even been documented cases of this fish attacking crocodiles and humans when this predator was short of food. Just imagine how aggressive and reckless a fish has to be to pounce on a crocodile. But in fact, even crocodiles themselves are afraid of these creatures. Often, Goliath tiger fish attack in schools, and when several dozen of these monsters rush at you, it makes absolutely no difference who you are a small fish or a giant crocodile. In this episode, there's a place for river monsters that have long been dead. Why not take a look at them as well? After all, I'm talking about mega piranhas. As you can easily guess, these are the ancestors of the modern South American toothy monsters. It's believed that their closest modern relative is the red-eye piranha, one of the largest in the world. By the way, it has the most powerful bite in the world in terms of bite force relative to animal size. Mega piranhas will be proud of their descendants because they had a similar title. Measuring about three and a half feet in length, mega piranhas boasted a zigzag row of teeth, which every prehistoric creature was afraid of. Scientists have calculated that mega piranha had a bite force of up to 4,749 newtons. Researchers concluded that mega piranhas surpassed all known vertebrate carnivores, including even the Tyrannosaurus themselves in terms of bite force relative to body weight. It's a good thing these monsters went extinct about 6.8 million years ago. We would definitely have a hard time with them. The White River Monster And finally, let me tell you about a river creature that could give a head start to all the above. The White River Monster, or Whitey, is a semi-mythical creature believed to inhabit the White River in the United States. The existence of this monster is not 100% proven, but locals claim that the White River Monster has been haunting them for decades. It's described as a giant which is about 11 and a half feet long and 5 feet thick. Many note that the monster looks like a huge catfish with creepy fangs, capable of shaking and overturning boats and attacking people. Others describe it as a manatee and still others describe it as an incomprehensible creature with skin like that of an elephant. Cryptozoologists have repeatedly tried to track and capture this monster, but it didn't take the bait. It's still unknown whether the White River is inhabited by a mutant catfish, a giant manatee, a colossal sturgeon, or an unknown animal yet to be discovered. That's all, guys. What do you think the White River monster could be? Share your thoughts in the comments.